So E3 has started, and disclosure, we'll be doing it a day, we'll be doing it a day the day after each event happens. So even though this recording is, is on day two, we'll talk about day one. So anything day two, we will not be talking about. Even though people will probably point out in the credit, probably now in the comments saying, you do know that this game was announced and I got a trailer for it, here's a link. Mm -hmm. But we're all focused on day one and we're not going for every single trailer that, and every news outlet there is. Mm -hmm. We're only focused on the games that interest us and us alone. Yeah. So any, <clears throat> any yeah. opinions expressed is a result of our own, so you can't argue with us if we say we don't give a flying shit about what the fuck Microsoft has up their sleeves for their console because we don't care. Although yeah. I will say one thing, if apparently it's been announced that they got a 360 backwards compatibility thing going on, mm. which is good, but why the fuck wasn't on that wasn't a key feature on its launch day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, kick it off, um it was the Nintendo World Championship at twenty fifteen which surprised me that brought it back. And with that, they announced Earthbound Beginnings to come to Wii U, which is the original Mobile One. Mm -hmm. Which has been shoved around, bought, sold on eBay, prototype carriages everywhere, wrong, the wrong dumped online, which was fully translated, but soft, soft modded to be called Earthbound Zero. Mm. So I'm guessing, uh, so I'm guessing from this, all the ROMs will be deleted. All the host has been taken off. Unless you still got the ROM anyway. But there, this is, could be a possibility for Mother 3. I can only assume they're going to call the Earthbound Beyond. It's probably. Oh, we, uh, Mother 3, I've seen the history and how much dedication Earthbound has as the yeah. ultimate o overlooked gem of, of the SNES library and even the best, one of the best RPGs of all time. Mm. So, uh, Mother 3, there is a lot of hope from that. Yeah. Hey, anything, anything you want to talk about? Um, well, quickly about the Nintendo Championship because I saw the towards like the last half an hour of it, mm -hmm. and again, the, the basic thing was they were playing um, Super Mario Maker, which was of course they played different levels made by various people, and Jesus, some well, of the levels. Wasn't that supposed to come out last year? Like it was like showcase, like his Super Mario Bros. and new Super Mario Bros. graphics. Wasn't that supposed to come out sometime no, last I year? I think they just announced it last year. This is the year it comes out. Still, there was a lot of games announced last year. Plenty of games announced last year, and they got released during the year and fourth quarter. Yeah, well, there's a lot of games that were announced and didn't come out, but we'll get to that in the next day. Um, and now I just find it funny just the amount of. Again, they had two people playing various levels created by people who were put in the game, and. Just some of the levels they made is just ridiculous. Like, literally, when you think to yourself, I can make a better level than that, this is pretty much, I'm going to make a level that's hard as buggery. Like, literally, you know what? If you think this level's hard, I'm going to make it ten times harder. Kaiser Mario levels? <laughs> Good. That is as a, just a brutal Mario, that there. Yeah, I just... What surprised me the most is the fact, A, these were levels that are clearly designed with just, I want to make the player suffer, but... The fact that the two guys that played it, they pretty much got through them relatively well in their first run through it. Hmm. That surprised me the most. Um, that said, how the game is going to, you know, when it finally comes out and how people are going to play, play their own level, I mean, God on those. Also during that, there was the official announcement that Ryu and Roy are coming to Smash Bros. as DLC. Hmm. Why Ryu from Street Fighter? Out of all the characters that were that fan voted Ryu from Street Fighter? Uh, to be fair, I think it was the case of what deal Nintendo's got with whoever, really, at the end of the day. Roy, I, Roy I could understand that he's a melee character. Now, every single character ever made, aside, I think, uh, included into Smash Bros. I think the only. People say Young Link's not in it, but Young Link would be because like Toon Link. Mm. Uh, there's no Wolf or Donald yet, although I didn't go a flying fuck for him. <laughs> He's, it was just a stronger version of Fox. It wasn't yeah. much. It was pointless. We have Falco, that's fine. Mm. And there's no Rob right now either, I think. Yeah, at the minute. So mm. right now we've got every character. 
I'm surprised he even brought, surprised he even brought back Dr. Mario. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I was surprised that um, during the whole sort of who'd you like to be in uh, Smash Bros, uh, at one point there was um, recently the Toad Jr. Kickstarter happened and even they were su suggested to put in their characters in Toad Jr. and they even had a picture of, well, what could Toad Jr. do as a final Smash move? So that kind of made me laugh, but I knew that was never going to happen. Not surprisingly, Rob is going to be an amiibo. <laughs> what else? Uh, Duck Hunt, Get and Watch, Falco, Get and Watch out at the fucking seat. Mm. It'll just be a flat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me Brawlers, Fighter, and Gunner. Mm. And a special amiibo that actually has Game and Watch holding a number. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting. Yeah. There's. I'm trying to look what else. I've got the entire list in front of me of stuff, like what the one would I, what I want to talk about next. Okay. Uh, I'll get the biggest stuff out of the way. First of all, shame you fucking free. <laughs> shame you free. How the hell this did we all knew we all knew that it was written. Shame you one had a first chapter. Shame you two had Two through six, two through six, I think, of the chapter of the story. Yeah. And it was like a final three episodes to go through. Mm. But we never got that. Yeah. And now we get it, a console like like two console generations later. Yeah. Well, it's, well, let's be fair. Shimmy Three, it's been talked about, rumored, said, "Are you going to make this?" Query that Sega shattered at Sega. And... There, there's like three questions that I get. I guess at every Sega thing. One. Are you going to make a Sonic Adventure 3? And the quick answer is no, they won't, because, to be honest, can they do anything that could live up to the actually hype and fan gratitude and fan respect of Adventure 2? No, they won't be. Two, when is Fantasy Star Online getting a Western release? Mm. Probably never. It may change, you never know. Yeah. And three, and three. Is they gonna are you working on a Shenmue free? Those have been those have been the three questions every time, and yeah. now one of those has been answered. Although it is going to be a kickstarted game. This is something I remember. There was a um, I'll make it quick. That people did ask Yuzuki, the guy who made Shenmue, saying well, because they're doing Kickstarter, and he suggested it's an option. So clearly, this is just the yeah we've been doing it all this time. We just wanted to wait for the right time. And our all all. As of right now, they have made their goal about 125% last time I checked. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's been done. Well, the fact it literally was, the slogan was, the future of Shenmue is in your hands. It's like, trust. <laughs> yeah, Capcom did the same thing with Let Mega Lander 3. You can be part of the development team. Yeah, fuck it. We're not doing it anymore since no people's interested. Everyone's fucking interested, Capcom. You're the one to pull the fucking plug. Yeah. And it is funny because I bet some people will be asking themselves for, with Shenmue 3 is like, well, if they could have done this, why didn't, they, why didn't Sega help make this years ago? Which I think the two reasons... I think it's the same thing, I think, with Bayonetta. Hmm. I don't think Shen, Shenmue 1 are fucking sold for the Dreamcast. It was a... yeah. It was a great success. Then it was Shenmue 2. Did sell as well, but did get you know, was... to, be, to be parted of the Xbox along that with the Shenmue 1 deal. movie. Hoping it was going to be a big sell on the Xbox, but of course it just wasn't. It, it just wasn't. Yeah. And it wasn't It wasn't a success, and I just think Sega just like, we can't, we don't want to fund a game that is, that is not going to sell. Hmm. But the but games again, of Hive have worked out for it. Yeah, and then again, you, people would have just said, well, you've got enough money, why don't you fund it yourself? Which. I think some people forget the first Shenmue game was like the most expensive video game of its time, like 99. Yeah. So even if they said, right, we're doing Shenmue 3, Sega would have gone bust within a week. You know, they just would have gone bust, you know, all the money and time and effort. If anything is anything to learn from Juniper Brother is that time heals all wounds. Even if the new wounds are going to open up quite bad if the game is as bad. Yeah, and more importantly, there's always going to be other people interested in it, so... I don't think Duke Nukem was that bad of a game anyway, it was just yeah. kind of flame. But, but, but that's the difference, obviously, because Duke Nukem was constantly kept changing its mind every two seconds when they were developing it. Shenmue 3 was, we want to do it, we like to do it, we just don't have the money for it. And with Platinum Games, they wanted to make a sequel, so they won't let them, because Bayonetta did not sell that well. It was a great game, but it did not sell. Surprisingly, um, the PS3 version is the worst version of the game, but it sold the most. Mm. But again, compared to Darksiders, at the same time, it did not sell. Yeah. 
But again, the fact that we're finally because again, I did check out the what they've made so far of the game, and they better make a HD version of Shenmue One and Two available for PS4 and Xbox One or I'm pretty PC. Sure. They have to release it HD. I think they will. I think that's pretty much once they're done with Shenmue Three, they're gonna like we'll do a big remastering of One and Two. Yeah, and on that note, Sega, when the fuck are you gonna release Yakuza One and Two HD in the Western? Seriously, Yakuza is like the, sh the sequel to successor to Shenmue, and it's fucking great. Well, to be fair, what's, well, really, let's be fair, they just announced Shenmue 3. I think everybody goes like, screw Yakuza! Yakuza 5's being made right now, so... But like I said, I mean, if people have been wanting to see the real sequel to Shenmue, this is really it. Mm. Get a ride in forklifts and talk to sailors. Yeah. Oh, shit, man. The next biggest announcement, which... I think everyone was expecting it, but they were more, more or less thinking it's not going to happen. But hey, The Last Guardian made an appearance. It's and we have a, 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 a release window of 2016, and it's coming to PS4. Mm. How long has this been in development, and how long ago was the first announcement? 2000, was it around about 2008 or nine? Seven or eight, I think. Yeah, around about that time, because I do remember it was announced, and from after that, we got very little. We got maybe another trailer, then. We got another trailer, but Cliff is the same thing, but a lot more detailed, yeah. showing off what the PS3 can do. Yeah, then there was a bit more of the gameplay, then there was a little behind the scenes thing about, oh, we're working on this very special game. And it just went into the dark afterwards. Hmm. And it was constant rumors, oh, you know, the guys have fallen out, you know, the guy behind it's left, the left it, and suddenly they're interested, but they wouldn't say yes or no, and... But the game is coming out, they said they wanted to make it. It was just time and money. Hmm. But now we have it. Yeah. And the, part of the downside is, is that it's not a P it, we were expecting to have it be the ICO game for the PS3. We never got it, we got the HD versions, but that was like a small gesture. Yeah, that was just something to buy. I, 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 I wouldn't be, I would, I would be surprised if the sales on that collection actually benefited Last Guardian for PS4. I'm not sure. Maybe. I think it was just the case of, well, are people still interested in these games? Because I think that's when they do these ports of games, is the case of, okay, well, let's just bring them out again. Let's, you know, let's res them up a bit, or at least get them running to work on these machines and see if there's still people interested. A, old people, older fans want to play it, but B, newer players want to try it out. Hmm. I think that's what they, that's the idea, so I'm not a game developer, but that's what I like to think how it works. You've got to get a PS4 now, don't you? <laughs> no, but it's funny because the, the big thing about Last Guardian was it was people kept saying it's basically Ico with a Shadow Colossus character as a psychic. Oh, you stick to what you know and stick to what you know and think, think about climbing these big creatures as they were mm -hmm. and using them for puzzles or even combat can really ben benefit a game, but uh, then again, it's the no word story that people that drives people to these games. I played both games, I didn't complete them, I could not get the Shadow Colossus. Mm. But even so, it's just the world and the characters and these creatures that draw you in, it feels like a whole epic world to explore. I think when you get down to it, in many cases, Ico, Shadow Colossus, and The Last Guardian, this is kind of like the PlayStation equivalent of Zelda. It's like, he's a world, he's like a unique little... Pretty, unique pretty much, if someone says that video games are not art, you point them to these games. These are the quintessential games to point them to. Hmm. I think in the most, I mean, again, you could make the argument they're very simplistic games. I mean, Ico is pretty much, you know, a puzzle solver where you have to have one character do another thing, or guide them through a series of elements then Shadow Colossus is one big, you know, trek to get to a boss fight. Yeah. If it's just done in a different, unique way, that's what makes them such these why everybody goes nuts about them. Uh, moving on, uh, another announcement for for me, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> and Mass Effect 4. Finally! But the problem is is the Mass Effect trilogy kind of closed on itself. <laughs> and I don't give a fuck about what the f anyone else has to say. I enjoyed Mass Effect 3. I did not give a shit about what the ending was. Mm -hmm. It was self-contained. End of. That's it. The Reapers are gone. Shepard is dead. And everyone everyone lives. And all mass, the mass releases, are, mass releases are gone. That's it. So Andromeda. I'm not too sure whether or not it will be a sequel. 
are an interquill with a different character. Wouldn't, I would have thought the best option was to have a new beginning, just like instead of a new trilogy with new set of characters or something. It'd probably be, it'll be like a drama to two um, probably a few years down the line. Hmm. Then yeah, again, there like, was... It, it was, it's gonna be like the model, be like the modern warfare of Call of Duty, where it's like a sub series, gonna be a sub series. Probably. Although everybody sort of expected it to be another Mass Effect game within a few years, anyway, because everybody was building up to E3, thinking, "Oh, Bioware will show off a new Mass Effect game." It's inevitable. Yeah, it's one of the biggest franchises since um, Dragon Age and Dragon Age. Eh. Mm. And I need to play Inquisition. I played one and two. I preferred two because of the combat. Mm. Story can suck it. <laughs> but um, I didn't. Ha- I didn't hate the story as much as everyone else. I was saying death threats to the fucking writer. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Mm-hmm. But I am excited about as a, as a, a drama. I, I fucking love the trilogy. Mass Effect Two especially. Mm. So I don't know what it's going to be. It's just exploring the galaxy, you play as a new character. Maybe it's more than just this shepherd. You can have your own. Identity rather than. You're not exactly forced to use the um, defaults for male Shep and Fen Shep, but I did anyway. Hmm. There's nothing new on that, but. Okay. It's happening, that's the main yeah. thing. I'm looking at a few other things as well here. Um, Sta- South Park, the Stick of Truth <laughs> sequel called Fractured Butthole. Yeah, it's a, it, gets it sounds like a fractured butthole, but it's butthole. Yeah, it was... <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's the superhero version now. Yeah, I'm to be fair, I'm surprised they're doing it again. I mean, after you know the Stick of Truth, which went through I don't know three years development through THQ, then that died and all that stuff. Which I think at one point they said we're never making another South Park game again, and now they just realise well we kind of got good at it once we finish it. It's like hmm, I'll make another one. So doing it again. And even you actually poke fun of themselves in saying. We, 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 we agreed to get rid of the stick, why would we tend to power again? There wasn't even an RPG, Carl! The combat sucked, and this time we're going to be better, and we're getting no less than a 9.5 on GameSpot. Yeah, yeah well that's South Park's interview. Even the, even the trailer ends with like pre the thing, which probably said, yeah, 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 that. Which, Shut yeah. up, boss! Yeah. Which even, I really remember in the, they had a three-part trilogy where they literally built up to literally the whole Black Friday thing of it. That was the Black um, Trilogy thing, and they did that. It all ended up with them saying, you know, let's make a game around the stick, which of course they ended up. The sci-fi game, now I'm, now I've been coming soon to start. Yeah, because they did that, and now I get a big fluffy meaner. So. so, I haven't, I've, I've watched um, Stick of Truth, I haven't played it. Yeah. What I, and what I heard is that the actual combat did suffer, but it's actually one, it's actually one of the best licensed games since Batman. Well, considering the fact that it's South Park and like the mid '90s had like a truckload of like South Park games, you know, Rally Racer, puzzle games, all this type of stuff. So, and... South Park, Sheffield Second, the South Park first person shooter. Yeah, pretty much all uh, those things. Uh, they all, they all suck. South Park, the Sheffield Shack was probably the better of the other all because <laughs> this is mini games and a quiz. Uh, again, yeah, unless you know '90s um, trivia, you're not gonna fucking win. No. I mean, at the end of the day, let's be fair. I mean, those games, they were just, hey, this show's big, let's get a fucking game out as quick as possible. Whereas this case was, no, we actually want to get, make a game that we not, want not, to not, a, not based on it, let's make a show as a game. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing what they're going to do with it. Yeah, well, you can expect a lot of big, well, if you've, <laughs> the last game was a lot of A lot of Marvel and DC jokes, yeah. Yeah, lots of jokes about Canada, Nazi baby zombies. And all that crazy stuff, so expect a lot of madness, weirder stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a few things. One thing in terms of Xbox, the big thing was um, Rare's, <laughs> Rare's actually doing something. In fact, they're doing like a big collection of games called Rare Replay. Ships, engage other ships, including ship that combat with cannonballs and ship ramming. Make new crew members and walk the plank above shack and best waters. Yeah, it basically is a rare version of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Hmm. But hey, they're oh, doing something. They're yeah, doing something. Yeah, I mean, after everybody keeps bitching and moaning, saying, Oh, they're dead. Oh, you know, they're not what they used to be. Ooh, you know, that's misery. It's like, for God's sakes, they still do some good stuff. I mean, come on, a bunch of whiners. It was nice to know they're doing something. I think it's only this year. I think it's the 30th anniversary. This is why they're doing the replay thing. So it's like a big anniversary to their own games. So that's nice. Uh, what else? Big games. Uh, interesting games for me. 
Another game I'm interested in is um, Lego Dimensions. In fact, the during the pre after yeah, I, I actually saw the trailer with Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, there was that, but there was like, that. <laughs> and uh, probably the other big game, which has probably not been shown off here, is Lego Worlds, which is like a Minecraft. Ma Lego Minecraft. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, it's like of all the games, I have to admit, out of every Lego game that's ever been made. I've just always wanted to see, you know, them try something like this. Because all the LEGO games we get down to it have been more or less the same for the last 10 years. Which every, is... every licensed LEGO game has been the same. It's been pretty... There has been a, there has been a unique gimmick here and there. Mm. But nothing really that stands out aside from it is a linear 3D, pla 3D platform brawler with co-op. And that's about it. Yeah, they've, I mean, they've been pretty much played the same. They've improved stuff, but... It's more or less based on what we did in LEGO Star Wars 1 about 10 years ago. But LEGO Worlds looks like really taking that idea of, let's actually, you have all the, it's pretty much like a child's dream. If I had infinite LEGO, what would I do with it? So I'm really looking forward to that, so whenever that comes out. Um, but yeah, one of the weird things that the Microsoft show is that they got a little, they actually had a little segment just about Beyond Eyes. This is the game that Team 17 helped publish from literally some cult from literally a student project turning into a full game, and I have to admit, out of all the games that I've seen in the last few years, none of them have been as this interesting as this one, because really it's... I, really, because if you say to someone, what's the game about? Well, you play as a blind girl. Which is like, and it's not like, oh, you play a blind girl, you have superpowers. No, you're literally a blind girl walking around a world that you cannot see, the character can't see. But she's sort of imagining it as you go through it. It's sort of forming like what trees would be, what they sound like, what they smell like. So, for me, so essentially, I... essentially, you're dead. Sorry, you're essentially dead. Yeah, essentially, um, but as a little girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But again, it's just I think out of all the games, I'm surprised. A, this was on the Microsoft, um, you know, part of the Xbox and PC lineup. And again, we got to see more of it. But a lot of people are suddenly going like, "Oh my God, what is this game?" Which like I said, I remember, again, this is, again, like I said before, this is a small game that was picked up by Team 17. So they're not, they're helping the game out. They're kind of like the publisher, essentially. Whereas the game is developed by Tiger Squid. That's the name of the company. Tiger uh, Squid. Yeah. I may have got that wrong. Who knows? But again, it's just out of all the games I would like to try out, I really want to try this one out. Because it just, visually, it's a beautiful looking game compared to anything else I've seen within, you know, the last three years or so. And also I'm just curious how it's going to play, because again, I'm not sure exactly as a game, or, because the basic premise is you, ha you have, um, you're a blind girl and your only friend is essentially this little cat, and the cat goes missing and you have to try and uh, find it, but of course you're a little girl who's very shy, hasn't been out, so it's been going on this sort of wondrous adventure into the wide world. So I'm kind of curious how it's going to work, like what you can and what you can't do, you know, Objectives you can, you know, essentially gameplay terms like what, what the builds. It's, it's Tiger and Squid. Yeah. Now I'm looking at their website right now. We've got a few of the games here as mm -hmm. well. Sheltered, Pinarium, This is the Police, yeah, <laughs> Strength of the Sword Ultimate, um, Deadwood, The Forgotten. Yeah. These Curse. are the games that um, Team 17 have helped publishing, as you mentioned. Yeah. But like I said, this is one of the games they're really trying to push up. And again, it's, you know, it's a small indie game, you know, but it's getting, at the minute, it's getting a lot of press from people. And all I can say is I just would love to try it out if there's a Mac version. So <laughs> that's my only, that's my only consensus is brilliant, great, but can you... Everhood. Again, but a different character, but exactly the same style. It's all claymation. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I love about this game. It's, clay, it's claymation. Um, last one from me, the big one is Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. I fucking love Fallout 3 in New Vegas. <laughs> so when this was announced, I was so fucking hyped. Mm. I don't care whether or not it would be something kind of iffy here and there, I am going to fucking play this. The biggest problem for me though, right now, is that my child is going to be born in November. <laughs> so it's either, should I stay at home and play the Fallout 4? Or should I take her my kid? Or the the actual birth? I'm like, <laughs> nope. As much as I want this, it's not going anywhere. I may have to wait a few weeks to get it, or have to wait for it back in stock. But baby comes first. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> so see that, gentlemen. Your child and your marriage come first, not the game. 
Yeah. The game's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> as long as you get it, that's the main thing. As long as you get it, like a few months later. Yeah. It'll be it'll be my wind down the game from like from changing diapers and screaming. <laughs> yeah, Fallout 4. I mean, I have to admit, I've never been. I've, it's kind of I've never been interested in these games before. But that said, after seeing this one, I have been a bit more interested in this one. Partly because again, I, I will say pick up Fallout 3. It takes a while to get into from what you've seen, but it re if you get let it, if you let, let it absorb you, it is one hell of a fulfilling experience. Even though a lot of people call it the walking simulator, <laughs> it is a fun game to play because even though like you're walk you're walking like miles to your location. It's what you're gonna find on that journey. Mm. Most likely, you'll get fucking ambushed by raiders or even death claws. But even it's... so, yeah, it is a fun experience. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm saying because Fallout 4. I mean, it reminds me bizarrely enough when I've watched it. Like the, the whole gimmick is you actually start up before the nuclear holocaust, so you actually get to see this utopia 1950s react. It kind of reminded me of Bioshock actually when I was watching this game. That, Bio and... Bioshock is kind of eh on its. Um history. This yeah. one's kept, Fallout is a different history from 19, kind of 1940s, 50s onwards. But again, it's the idea that they're trying to immerse you into a world. So at first, you're in this, you know, idealistic 1950s world, then this horrible tragedy happens, and then afterwards you get to a world which has been pretty much you're left to what the hell happened to this world for the last yeah. 900 years. I, I, know, I know what happens. It's the mm. resource wars, invasion from China, and the nuclear fallout. <laughs> and it's because the the transistor wasn't invented. Mm. Instead, it was atomic mm. conversion. That's what was invented first. So no, everything, just... every, every, everything was put into a sub-block of 1950s ideas mm. with, a, with nuclear power. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I say it reminds me of Bioshock because it's a get definitely game that, on the one hand, it's just a shooting game and a sort of RPG game, but on the other hand, it's kind of, here's a world for you to try out, go around, have a look around, and see these bizarre remembrance of humanity. And at the same yeah, there's no, there's no handhold in Fallout. No, I was going to say, so it's pretty much the case, here's a world for you to just go anywhere and do whatever you want, essentially, so... Just don't go north, you'll get killed instantly. <laughs> That's if you play New Vegas. Never go fucking north because right. you like get you, you get killed instantly. Yeah, but like, like I said, I mean, I've never been interested in Fallout before. But this one, you know, I will admit, as a sorry, as a sorry, it interests me. But that said, if it's any good or not, I don't know. But I'll give it a try. I pick up Fallout Three first. Let's get see if it's try. It's cheap. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Unless you want to talk about Doom. Yeah, we should, well, we should talk about Doom, because this was... I remember Game Trailer said this is the game they wanted to see what the hell they are going to do with this. Yeah, because last year there was a, what, 10 second teaser of the Mega Demon? Well, basically, basically imagine the devil being biomechanically upgraded. I think it's not a Mega Demon. I think, I think that's what it's called, I can't remember. Someone, yeah, well, someone, someone correct me on that. I'm just saying, it's basically, imagine the devil that has psychotic enhancements, basically. Yeah. And, oh boy... <laughs> That, I heard it was cancelled or something. <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard it was cancelled because it wasn't getting funded or people were interested. And I was, but now it was like, no, here it is. Here's even a gameplay trailer of what's gonna fucking happen. And it was shown at QuakeCon. That was the big thing. It was shown and played at QuakeCon. This was the first time everybody in the world's got to see what they're really doing with it. Um, they played it with the New Order. Mm. So Wolfenstein came back and it was pretty fucking good. Mm. Now we've got Doom, and it's looking pretty fucking good. Mm. It, is, it looks like the first person shooter being regenerated. Mm. Well, to be truthful, the game that defined the genre, I mean, it is hard to think about what's it going to do to really push it, and really this game's basic mantra is, we're going to make it as pretty as possible, as fast as possible, and as gory and buggery as possible. Yeah, Doom started it. Yeah. GoldenEye brought it to consoles. Halo reinvigorated it. Mm. Call of Duty modernized it. Yeah. What can they do now? Yeah, I mean, really, it's funny because really what I was, funny about when I was looking at this game, it starts off with the guy putting his helmet on, which I just thought, that's Master Chief's helmet, isn't it? Which then again is like, well, who, well, let's be fair, what was the first guy in Doom? It's pretty much was a space marine. Yeah. So let's be fair. It's on, it's on the fucking front cover. Yeah, it's a different from cover. I mean, let's be fair, he's just the, the generic Space Marine 74821. 
section blah 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 pretty much but aka doom guy yeah doom guy pretty much and i will admit it just seeing the game i will admit the first half where it's just him running around in the space um i don't know like some labs set research center on mars which looks okay i mean the big thing of course was the glory <laughs> was the finishing moves to all the monsters and mutants that he's doing but when we got to hell it's um that felt like okay this is doom this is definitely that's, doom. that's all we basically need really it's like do we need a story in this no it's doom guy versus the demons of hell yeah that's all you need yeah and yeah, do, uh, Microsoft announced that Microsoft got out of the Xbox 360. Mm. Fucking finally, it should have been with the console beginning. Sony, can you do the same thing, please? I would, love to, I would love to play PS3 games on PS2 games on the fucking PS4. Yeah, I think it's... Well, to be fair, I think people, from day one, if this machine is twice as powerful as your previous two consoles, then what's stopping you from pointing it into your new machine? I mean, if you're going to all this effort to make it bigger and more powerful, then surely... It should have the ability. It's, it's the one thing. One thing happens every time. People trip in the old console to get the new one. Mm. But we're till you know, we have to keep it because all the games you have for it are not going to work on the new console. Having a PS4 and a PS3 right now, it's awkward because I either keep changing the fucking wire. Mm. I want a console that plays PS1, 2, 3 and 4 games. And Blu-rays and DVD and music CDs. Mm. It's essentially a PC gaming system. Yeah. Just you can't, up, can't up, up, upgrade it with new stuff. Mm. So why the hell not Sony? Mm. Well, then again, I mean, the, it's interesting that uh, they said about this, you know, you can buy the play your old Xbox 360 games. Though they haven't said, is this just, you have to buy, is this the case you can play them, but you have to play them all over again? Possibly. Right, because there's some games I'm never playing from the beginning to end again. I'm sorry, even with this news, it's like, no, I'm going to keep on to my old save files, because there are some games... Unless, I, you, unless you actually put your save files on the cloud. Yeah, I was going to say that. Unless there's some way of doing that, but if I had to go through the drudgery of playing the final boss in Sonic Unleashed, no. Just, no, never again. Never again. All the final bit in Nuts and Bolts, just never again. Never. There's your, new, there's your new task, Microsoft. Fucking cloud-based all save files. And I do mean it, Microsoft. Never again. And that's it for what we're interested yeah, in. Yeah, the minute. <laughs> tomorrow, will be, tomorrow will be a lot more focused and we'll have an actual list of games we want to talk oh, yeah. about. Get a notepad and write them down. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow with Day yeah. 2.